Your Worship, my Lords, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure uh, to be here at Mossley Mill today uh, for the launch uh, of our 2010 General Election Manifesto. For most of my political life, manifesto launches in Northern Ireland have summed up how, f uh, f how our politics was cut off from mainstream British politics. Across all parties, we talked about what we would like to do. But it stopped there. Why? Because Northern Ireland was a place apart. We had no real say in who would be Prime Minister of our country. Our, our role in the mother of parliaments was limited. No chance of being involved in the government of the United Kingdom. Well, we have changed all that. We, the two great parties who stand on this manifesto, have already uh, changed politics in Northern Ireland. The Ulster Unionist Party, the party that ensured that Northern Ireland's place in the United Kingdom, the party which uh, defended democratic values against the onslaught of terrorism during the dark years of the Troubles, the party which took the courageous decision in 1998 to build the peace, and our colleagues and friends in the Conservative Party, the Conservative Party which governed the United Kingdom for most of the 20th century, stood firm during the Cold War and restored British pride, and is now ready to give the decisive government required to lead our country out of recession. Our two great parties are now working together in partnership to build on these achievements. And to end Northern Ireland's semi-detached status within the United Kingdom. William, your presence here uh, with us today demonstrates uh, the Conservatives and Unionists' conviction that Northern Ireland is not a place in part, but an integral part of the United Kingdom. Yeah. Needless to say, William, you're very welcome uh, to be back with us uh, today. I think that um, others uh, in this election tell us that Northern Ireland would be best served by a hung parliament. It's hard to believe that self-proclaimed unionists are actually promoting this. Not only would a hung parliament undermine the ability of a government to take the decisive action required to lead our country out of recession, it would hand influence to Scottish and Welsh nationalists determined, determined to break up the union. It would uh, hand influence to Lib Dems, determined to see the UK in the Euro, governed by a federal Europe. Those of us who cherish the United Kingdom cannot be hoping, hoping for such an outcome. Those of us who want to see our economy led out of recession and debt must be campaigning for a strong mandate for a Conservative and Unionist government, not the indecision and grubby backroom deals of a hung parliament. If we want to see change, real meaningful change, in Northern Ireland and across the United Kingdom, it will only come through a Conservative and Unionist government. The change that will restore economic prosperity. And that, by the way, does not mean, must not mean, uh, anything other than growing the private sector here in Northern Ireland. I have to say, ladies and gentlemen, I have never listened to such hypocrisy that I've heard in the last 48 hours from people who stood up and threatened the whole community that we were going to cut right, left and centre. These are the same people, ladies and gentlemen, who said in their manifestos, in the programme for government, in all of their comments that the private sector need to, needs to grow. It's part of, our, of everybody's collective de determination to do that. This country used to be at the core of economic development in, this, in these islands. The building that we're in demonstrates that Northern Ireland had a strong entrepreneurial spirit. Now we've had 56,000 people out of work here, 32,000 more than we had two years ago. Do we not want to do something for those people? Do we not want to help them?
I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we're not lying down under these allegations. We're going to confront them and confound the people who are making them because they have made statements that they cannot stand over. Let me give you just one example. The Alliance Party. The Alliance Party, who was on proclaiming that, uh, how terrible this was. Let me read you what they said. The public sector share of GDP is 71%. This is higher than many command economies, including many Soviet bloc states during the Cold War and Nazi Germany. <laughs> and those are the people who come on the radio to criticise us and to criticise David Cameron when all he told was the truth. And if we go no further than the DUP manifesto of this year, spending reductions must be pursued rather than seeking to increase taxes. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I think people have to get it through their heads that what, they're being, what is happening here is they're being conned. Well, we're not going to con them. We're not going to dodge the issue. And the fact that we are now discussing the economy as a core issue in this election proves that we are bringing Northern Ireland back to the centre of British politics. We are not prepared to allow Northern Ireland be left on the window ledge of the British economy. We in this part of the United Kingdom should have the jobs and economic opportunity that come with a vibrant private sector. Other parties know this and have said so publicly, yet haven't the guts to say it during an election what they were saying some time ago. We have published their comments again today so that the people can make up their minds. I can't think of a better illustration to show how we must vote for change on the 6th of May. The change that will put Northern Ireland at the heart of the Union. The change that will deliver a government which is not neutral on the Union like Labour, ladies and gentlemen, but passionately committed to the United Kingdom. The change that will restore economic opportunity to all parts of the United Kingdom. Look at our proposals for pensioners, a response to a campaign fought for years by groups representing pensioners to restore the link between earnings and pensions. This is the only long-term way to end pensioner poverty and only Conservatives and Unionists can deliver it. This is the change to which this Conservative and Unionist manifesto stands. This is the change for which we Conservatives and Unionists stand. So, not, so let's take this message right out across Northern Ireland and bring Northern Ireland back to the heart of the Union. That's what we stand for in this election. And the difference between us and other parties is very simple. Other parties are fighting to be the opposition. Conservatives and unionists are fighting to be the government. Yeah.